Hey guys, it's John with my Slay the Spire, just basic concepts series, and let's talk about energy. We have talked about all of the in-combat resources except for energy and potions, and I, I'm not sure that I'm even going to make a video about potions right now. That might come later. Um, energy, we have three energy this turn, and for the start of the game, for most decks, energy is the defining limitation of a turn. Your turn is going to usually end when you run out of energy at the start of the game. You may end up with a deck where you actually run out of cards before energy consistently, but that is abnormal at the start of the game at least, and it doesn't happen that often as the game progresses. So this energy number is, is a very big thing. You can pick up some relics, which give you more energy. Some of them give you energy very situationally. Some of them give you energy all the time, but have a cost associated with them. Energy is generally an expensive thing to get. We can pick up more energy, though, by getting cards. There are some relics which can give you a lot of energy, like Sundial gives you two energy every time you shuffle your deck um, three times. So if you have a deck that only has five cards in it and you're just shuffling it all the time, Sundial could just make you infinite energy very easily. Um, that's a relic that you can pick up. So... Yeah, in a normal situation, energy is a limitation. And I I am on this turn because I think it's a really interesting energy turn. Uh, we've talked about block, and hopefully from talking about block, you can understand why I don't want to like defend defend on this turn, because we have to get this guy dead before he starts to scale the fight really hard against us. So I like strike strike. I think that it's the right play. Um, and then we have one energy left. And we have three options, and we can rule out this one. We don't want to play the, the regular defend. We're not going to do that. Um, we can defend for eight block, or we can exhaust all non-attack cards in our hand and gain five block for each. So for one energy, we can get eight block or 10 block and remove two cards. Maybe I should have talked about this in the cards video. Anyway, I don't actually know what's correct here. Probably second win. Um, and then we end our turn. So in this fight, all we're doing is working out how to use our energy to get as much stuff as possible. We bash and pommel strike here, and um, we drew a card as the last card of the turn. And that's like one of the heuristics that people think about is like, if you're drawing cards, you should draw them first. But in that case, our energy was creating the most damage we possibly could have because we, we got our bash in and we vulnerable it before we pommel strike it, so we use our energy to make the most damage possible. And this turn, hopefully we get to pommel strike, strike, strike. Again, most damage possible. Doesn't even matter what the other card is. And we're done. Hey, this is a this is a cool relic to look at while talking about energy. Every time we play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. This is such a great relic to get offered in this series where I'm talking about the basic resources. So I've talked a lot about how how there are a ton of cards in the game that only deal damage, but how there are different ways to get damage. And we've talked about energy, and we've talked about how energy is a limitation, we've talked about cards and how cards are a limitation. Letter opener creates a situation, and everything is in different situations in this game. Just like all the relics you have, all the cards you have, which enemy you're killing, it all changes all the time. This creates a situation where playing lots of skills deals damage to enemies by itself. So it's not that impressive a relic on the Iron Head, really. But if we were the silent right now, all of a sudden there are so many skills in this game for the silent, which are relatively low cost. Some of them even cost zero. All of a sudden those go way up in value and our regular damage dealing things just start to look silly why do we have a strike in our deck or why do we have this like card for one energy which deals eight or whatever that we added earlier when a letter opener makes it so you know playing prepared defend defend deals 15 damage to to the three enemies we're fighting um Battle Trance is a cool card to look at for energy because Battle Trance gives us way more cards for a turn. So all of a sudden we are never ever going to have enough energy to play everything. 
Energy is a very abstract and difficult resource to think about. It's something that I'm learning as I try to think about it. Um, but we can talk about how energy is maximized in this deck, and I think that will be instructive. The, the best way we can spend our energy in this deck, keep in mind we have three every turn, is we probably want to like shockwave early on. We want to get a bash in if we don't shockwave so that an enemy is vulnerable. And then we want to like play pummel strike twice a turn and a defend plus once a turn or something like that. Or pummel strike twice a turn and second win for a big block and then maybe pummel strike, defend pummel strike or something. If that were possible, that would be ideal. It's not possible. We can't manipulate our deck to actually make that happen very reliably. But, you know, if we use second wind to remove all the blocks and had battle trance, we'd be getting uh, very, very close to being able to do that. So, this is a thing that you can think about a lot, and <laughs> there, there's a long way to go in thinking about this. Look at, look at your deck list and think, I have three energy, what do I want to do with it? And then when you're removing cards, think about like, okay, if my three energy should be used to either attack three times or block twice and attack once or block once and attack twice, do I want to remove a defend or a strike from my deck right now? If my three energy needs to get used to attack three times sometimes, can I really afford to remove a strike from my deck? If, as the game goes on, and I get up to four energy and I have three powers in my deck, if on the first and second turn I need to use my energy to put powers in my deck, or put powers into play, the powers that are in my deck need to be put into play on the first few turns, can I really afford to add a card which deals damage on turn five? Like, add some sort of card which is scaling up in a cool way or whatever. Can I really afford to add another one of those to my deck if I need my first and second and third turns of energy to be getting the powers that I've identified as important to play and blocking for me? Also, if I have all those powers to get into play and I need to be blocking, how many attacks can I really afford to have in my deck? And how many blocks can I afford to have in my deck if, like, if I'm going to be playing powers and blocking a little bit, and then I'm going to be attacking and blocking a little bit, probably I don't want half of my deck to be blocks. So think about what you want your turns to look like against enemies, and this requires you to know what the enemies are, and there's a lot of learning involved in Slay the Spire. And then you have to work out how you're building a deck to let you have those turns, to let you spend the energy the way you want to spend it. The larger deck is, the less consistent your draws are going to be, but there are some benefits to having a larger deck, which we've talked about in cards. And yeah, okay. That's like the, the conceptual, general, very complicated thing that's going with energy. And you can think about that actually forever. Um, let's talk about some ways that energy completely breaks. The Silent has a bunch of cards which create energy. If you draw them enough, you can actually just make infinite energy. Sundial makes two energy every time you shuffle your deck. If you have a free card which draws a card and all of your cards are in hand, then every time you play it, you shuffle your deck again. If you redraw it, um, all of a sudden you have infinite energy. There are cards which cost zero and do things. So you can just play a bunch of cards which cost zero and all of a sudden your energy doesn't matter anymore. The enemy is just dead. So there are lots of ways you can identify to break energy as a limitation. And if you also break cards as a limitation by drawing cards while you're doing it, you can have a deck which goes infinite. Um, it's actually fairly easy to do in this game. So a concept to think about with energy is what happens if energy isn't a limitation anymore? Another way that energy cannot be a limitation is if you generate more energy than the cost of the cards you're drawing is the play. So if you have like very, very low cost, low cost cards that you're playing, and like among them are some cards which generate energy, or among them are some cards which cost zero, you might actually be ending turns with more energy than you need to cast all of your cards. So um, yeah, you can aim toward a deck which breaks energy as a limitation and breaks cards as a limitation, at which point you're probably infinite. There's one endgame boss which you cannot 
ever go infinite against, but other than that, you can theoretically go infinite with the deck. Something to recognize, which is important, is that going infinite is very enjoyable. Um, it's really cool. It doesn't give you more than 100% win rate. So if you can identify a path which has less resistance and gets you to 100% win rate, like if you can put together a deck which is just doing enough every turn to win against any possible enemy in the game along the path that you're taking, um, that may be easier to do than trying to break the game and go infinite or whatever. In general, in this game, doing very, very, very silly things is typically very, very, very powerful. Um, but it's also usually harder to set up than just doing something a little bit more reasonable. And sometimes the thing that's a little bit more reasonable is enough to win anyway. So. All right. That's all of the resources that I want to talk about in combat. Um, I'm going to talk about the strategic layer resources next. <laughs>